The second step in our project will be to let the user enter their address into a form. But as part of that, we're going to add some validation. We only want to proceed to the third step if their address looks good. We can accomplish this by adding a form view to the address view struct we made previously, which will contain four text fields, name, street address, city, and zip. We can then add a navigation link to move to the next screen, which is where the user will see their final price and can check out. To make this easier to follow, we're going to start by adding a new view called checkout view, which is where this address view will push to once the user is ready. This just avoids having to put a placeholder in now, then remember to come back later. So create a new Swift UI view called checkout view and give it the same order observed object property and preview that address view has. At observed object, var order, order. And then down in the preview, order, order. Again, we'll come back to that later, but first let's implement address view. Like I said, this needs to have a form with four text fields bound to four properties from our order object, plus a navigation link passing control off to our checkout view. First, we need four new at published properties in order to store delivery details. At published var name equals empty string. At published var street address equals empty string. At published var city equals empty string. And at published var zip equals empty string. Now replace the existing body of address view with this. Form, section, text field name, text dollar order dot name, text field, street address, text dollar order dot street address, text field city, text dollar order dot city, text field zip, text dollar order dot zip. Then another section, navigation link, destination, checkout view, order, order, text checkout. And finally, dot navigation bar title, delivery details, display mode, dot inline. As you can see, that passes our order object on one level deeper, the checkout view which means we now have three views pointing to the same data. Go ahead and run the app again, because I want you to see why all this matters. Enter some data on the first screen, enter some data on the second screen, then try navigating back to the beginning, then forward to the end. That is, go back to the first screen, then click the bottom button twice to get to the checkout view again. What you should see is that all the data you entered stays saved no matter what screen you're on. Yes, this is the natural side effect of using a class for our data, but it's an instant feature in our app without having to do any work. If we had used a struct, then any address details we'd entered would disappear if we moved back to the original view. If you really wanted to use a struct for your data, you should follow the same struct inside class approach we used back in Project 7. It's certainly worth keeping it in mind when you evaluate your options. Now that address view works, it's time to stop the user going to the checkout unless some condition is satisfied. What condition? Well, that's down to us to decide. Although we could write length checks for each of our four text fields, this often trips people up. Some names are only four or five letters long. So if you try to add length validation, you might accidentally exclude people. So instead, we're just going to check that the name, street address, city, and zip properties of our order aren't empty. I prefer adding this kind of complex check inside my data, which means you should add a new computed property to order like this one. var has valid address, bool, if name dot is empty, or street address dot is empty, or city dot is empty, or zip is empty, return false. Otherwise return true. We can now use that condition in conjunction with SwiftUI's disabled modifier. Attach that to any view along with the condition to check and the view will stop responding to user interaction if the condition is true. In our case, the condition we want to check is the computed property we just wrote, has valid address. If that's false, then the form section containing our navigation link ought to be disabled because we need users to fill in their delivery details first. So, Add this modifier to the end of the second section in address view. Dot disabled. 
order dot has valid address is equal to false. Now if you run the app, you'll see that all four address fields must contain at least one character in order to continue. Even better, SwiftUI automatically grays out the button when the condition isn't true, giving the user really clear feedback when it is and isn't interactive.